right, let's get cracking. So I've got the coffee, I've got Unity opened, and I'm working on abilities today. Let's make some cool abilities. So I've got one ability type just now that I can use. It's the melee ability. I've got one ability here. Uh, punch asshole. I don't think punch asshole's going to stick around till the full release, but I mean, let's just see one thing at a time. So I need a ranged ability type too. This is how my abilities are set up at the moment, but you can see here I've only got the melee attack actually implemented. So the next one I'm going to do is ranged attacks. And so I did it. Dead simple. We can click shoot stuff, which is our new ranged attack. Click shoot stuff, click orc. Step through code. Speed. So I found this ancient shitty wee bit of code that I wrote for a very similar game actually that only made it to prototype. So I literally just copied this in, changed a couple of things. And now when we run the game, I'm going to shoot wee Jimmy, shoot stuff at him, whatever stuff might be, and you can see shoot a wee projectile at him for a nice wee effect. So now you'll see here that as well as checking the range of the ranged ability, making sure that we're in range, I'm now checking if the line of sight is clear. Which I've tried to comment it as clear as possible so I don't forget everything that I've done here. Um, but it is basically getting all the tiles that separate us from the target and it's checking if any of these are a blocker which is declared here. And the only thing that I have declared as a blocker right now is the forest tile. It's not perfect at this point but it's a nice wee start and I'll refine it as the game progresses. So let me just show you that now. So I've got two enemies. These aren't going to wander. So if I click my shoot stuff, and I'll just clear this, and I click on the target that's behind the tree, you can see here it's out of range or another condition is not met. Line of sight is blocked. I really need to implement a UI for this, but anyway, let me go up here, click shoot stuff, click this orc, and he is dead. And now you can see that orc is making his way over to get me. He's not going to get me. You don't know why. Because I'm going to shoot some of my stuff at him. Bang! Covered in stuff. The next ability type I'm going to add in is heals. I can't test out healing if I don't have a way to view my player's health though. So I went about adding this really simple health bar. And you'll see I've configured it here. So that every time the player gets attacked and it loses health. It gets updated. Dead simple. And this is the code for my healing abilities. And to be honest, I don't actually know what else I need, so I'm going to try this out now. So I'm just going to create a brand new ability here. Set it to heal. So I've got magic touch. Touch yourself and heal yourself. And then I'll just add here the heal amount to be 10. Now I just need to get slapped around a little bit to lose some health. Okay, so I've been slapped, now I can heal myself, but I'm just getting attacked again, so I'm actually going to just kill this guy, so I punch his ass, and heal myself, and it's not activating, let's take a look. So while investigating the problem, I realised that the player object lacked a certain collider, so I couldn't actually target myself, but in doing so, I found something out. You can actually punch your own asshole. Let me show you. Look at that. Punching my own asshole. Damaging myself. I can shoot stuff over myself as well. What the hell? But I can heal myself by using the magic touch. Which is even better. Because that's what I intended for in the first place. So now that's working. There's a certain stat that I want to add which is going to complement the last ability type that I'm adding. So the last ability type for now is buffs. So adding buffs to the player so that they get increased damage or increased speed. And speed is the stat that I want to add. So if I show you just now, you can see I move and the enemies move. However, if I've got the speed stat, I can potentially move two or three times before the enemy can move because I'm just that fast. It's going to make it, if I want to role players like this, elf, archer, 
who jumps on giant elephants and shoots arrows. I can move two, three squares before those orcs can. But right now, that's not possible, so I'm going to look at implementing the speed stat before I do buffs. Let's take a look. So that went a lot simpler than I thought it would. Having clean code has paid off here, so I set up my speed statistic over here, attribute or whatever you want to call it, and I set it to 3. So basically, all that means is I can take 3 turns for every one that the enemies take, so let's show you that. So that might introduce some cool playstyles. I have me um, made it so that using abilities can stack with this because I just think that might be a that might be a wee bit too extreme. But we'll see how this works. So I started developing this class called Buff, which will allow me to add and remove buffs. But I need to update my old stat container for agents to be able to actually use the buffs so i'm going to do that next so time has went on a bit but i've been implementing the buff code here which you can see and if we go back in and we use our new ability do line so we do a line increasing our speed for two turns sounds great let's do a line bang and now we can see or can you my speed here is at 1, but if I do a line, it's 3. And it's back to 1, because doing a line has a 2 turn duration. So it works good. Just need to display something now. So I got a really basic UI working here, so let's take a wee look. Let's do a line. Which, if we click ours, we've done the line and we've got the wee box here, which will be a lovely wee icon when I get graphics in. So now if I kick about and one more, one more. And now the buff is expired, the icon's away, but it doesn't really do anything now. So I need a wee tooltip when I hover over it. So let's do that just now. So I had some code that was a wee bit of a mess to be honest, that made this a bit of a ball ache, but I've created this new UI hoverable, which initially was a button, but this is a really flexible way to um, show tooltips and hide tooltips when I hover over an object, and this is applied now to monsters, it's applied to abilities, and it's now applied to my buffs as well, so if I go in and I load the game, it's great how modular this is. So I'm hovering over monsters out in the world and it shows the tooltip. And then I hover over my abilities and it shows the tooltip. If I do a line on myself and I hover over this wee icon, you can see here now that it shows the buff as active and that all uses that one UI hoverable class. So I took a turn, one turn remaining and it's gone. 